What is geriatrics? If you've rotated with me, you'll know that I often say that the answer is pediatrics. Think about it. Nursing homes are just orphanages for old people. The fast skill is pediatric milestones in reverse. Well, child checks are just Medicare annual wellness visits. Helicopter parents are also helicopter children. Kids and seniors are vulnerable populations that are ripe for abuse. Studying medications in both populations is really hard. And when they start crying and acting out, you give them both respect. <laughs> On a serious note, sometimes this question is answered by asking a related question. When does a patient need to see a geriatrician? Now, most people think that the answer is, well, 65 years old, but geriatrics is more than just age. If you think about it, you've probably met some 90-year-olds who are healthier than some of the 65-year-olds you know, so not every old person needs to see a geriatrician. Geriatrics is a holistic view on elder health. It's a medical philosophy. It's a study of syndromes that afflict seniors. And perhaps the best encapsulation of geriatrics in a nutshell is the five M's. Mind. Geriatrics is plagued by illnesses that rob our patients of their minds. Dementia, delirium, and depression, and their effects on quality of life and families are some of the most iconic geriatric problems. Mobility. Remember when you got your driver's license? Remember how exhilarating and liberating that was? Imagine having that taken away. Now, let's go one step further and take away your ability to walk. Walking and falling not only have huge impacts on quality of life, but are also crucial prognostication factors. Medications. Drugs are poisons with favorable side effect profiles, but then you give them to people without functioning livers or kidneys and with different body fat distributions than what were studied in clinical trials, and then you add in 20 other meds to the mix, and you have a recipe for disaster. Despite our good intentions, sometimes we do more harm than good, and sometimes less is more. Multi-complexity. Kids don't have a lot of past medical history. Older adults have plenty, so much so that they need elaborate support systems to help manage these problems. Are you going to quit your job as a doctor to help take care of grandma? And if not, then who will? And who's paying for it? What matters most? Imagine that you have six months left to live, and 40% of that time is spent in the hospital, 40% is spent in a clown orphanage, and the remaining 20% is spent at home with your loved ones. If spending time with your loved ones is your priority, is this breakdown really the best use of your time? We need to make sure that you're getting the care that you want, and not the stuff that you don't. You were never one of us. You were nothing but a usurper. A false idol. Okay, so my boss is going to get angry at me for saying this, but I don't expect you to memorize these. Let me give you an analogy. These are the Japsum graduation objectives. These are all good things, and I was required to memorize this list at one point, and I still use this card as a bookmark. Can I list the graduation objectives? No, of course not. Memorizing buzzwords doesn't make you a good doctor, and being able to rattle off the five M's doesn't make you a good geriatrician. I mean, come on, one of these starts with a W. No, what's more important for me is that you understand these concepts and why they're important, and that you practice and apply geriatric sensibilities when seeing older patients. But Matthew, you say? I'm a doctor, and this sounds like, uh, I don't know, social work. Yes, yes, that's an excellent thought because geriatrics requires an interprofessional team to work successfully. Geriatrics is too complicated for any one discipline to manage, and so we need a village, a family, a, a team approach to solve this crisis. And isn't this why we went into medicine? Dig out your personal statements that you wrote for your med school applications. What did you say? Did you write about your deep, personal connection to the tapestry of humanity? Or did you write about wanting to answer step one board exam questions? I can't answer this question. Does that make me a bad doctor? Well, no, of course not. I mean <sighs> okay, I've just gotten word from Dr. Zutsu that it does in fact make me a bad doctor.